Dear students, in this section we are going to learn how to calculate force on a dipole placed in non-uniform electric field. Suppose a dipole is placed in uniform electric field. Here you can observe this dipole is placed along the electric field lines. That means the dipole moment vector and electric field lines are making 0 degree angle. This is the negative charge of the dipole, this is the positive charge of the dipole. In dipole, charges have equal and opposite magnitude separated by a small distance. Electric field is E. That means the negative charge will experience force in the leftward direction. It will have the magnitude QE and positive charge will experience the force same magnitude that is QE but in the rightward direction. That means net force experienced by this dipole will be zero. That means translational equilibrium condition. Also, net torque acting on the dipole in this condition is also zero. That means rotational equilibrium condition. Now, what happens if we rotate dipole at certain angle like this, theta degree with respect to electric field lines. The dipole moment vector is making theta degree with respect to electric field lines here. Here also we can observe the negative charge and positive charge both will experience the equal magnitude force but in opposite direction. That means net force on the dipole will be zero. But net torque on the dipole will not be zero. That means dipole will be in translational equilibrium condition but not in rotational equilibrium condition. But one thing is common in both scenario that is no force experienced by the dipole. Now we can say no force experienced by dipole in uniform electric field. Now let us place the dipole in non-uniform electric field like this. You can observe here at position of the negative charge the density of the electric field lines are less and at the position of the positive charge density of the electric field lines are more. That means the electric field intensity at the position of the positive charge is greater than the intensity of the electric field at the position of the negative charge. That means the force experienced by the positive charge in the right forward direction will be greater than the force experienced by the negative charge in the left forward direction. That means in this condition dipole will experience net force. Okay? That means we can say dipole may experience force if it is placed in non-uniform electric field. Now let us calculate this force. Okay, So for calculating this force, we need to calculate the potential energy associated with the external field. Okay, So let us write this potential energy. And we have the expression for the potential energy for dipole placed in external electric field. We have the formula U equal to minus P dot E. This is the expression for calculating the potential energy of the dipole placed in external electric field. P is the dipole moment and E is the external electric field at the center of the dipole. Okay? And if we are interested to calculate the force because we know the potential energy is associated with the conservative field, that means force acting on the dipole can be calculated by taking gradient of this electric potential energy like this. So, force on the dipole should be equal to negative gradient of the potential energy. Okay? If field is one dimensional, suppose vector field is one dimensional, so we can write Fx. Suppose electric field is only restricted along the positive x direction, you can say x direction. So, we can write Fx equal to derivative of u with respect to x, negative derivative of u with respect to x. So, force on the dipole will be this one. Okay? And you know u equal to minus p dot e. So, here we can write this is p dot minus minus will be positive because this is u with the negative sign and here is also negative sign. So, this will be positive value. So, the force should be equal to p vector dot e del e by dx and in i direction. And similarly, suppose we have the three dimensional field. For three dimensional variation of the field, we can write f vector equal to del u by dx del x i cap and del u by del y j cap plus del u by del z k cap. Okay? Now, let us take few illustrations. Through coming illustration, we are going to consolidate this concept. 
So, let us move to illustration number 1. In this illustration, it is given an electric dipole with dipole moment P. It is placed near a long line charge of linear charge density lambda as shown in the figure. This is the dipole having dipole moment P vector. This is the infinite long wire having charge density lambda per unit length. Okay, And this dipole is placed at a distance a small r from this wire. And here we need to find the force acting on the dipole. Okay, so let us make the situation to the next page. And we know if we want to find the force acting on the dipole, we need to find the potential energy of the dipole associated with the electric field of the long wire, right? And we know the potential energy of the dipole and wire system is given by the formula U equal to minus P dot E, right? Here, P is the dipole moment of the dipole and E is the electric field generated by the long wire. And we know this long wire will generate the electric field at the center of the dipole in the rightward direction like this. This is the E vector. You can observe here this electric field generated by the long wire and dipole moment both are in the same direction and we know the magnitude of this electric field also this is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r okay now we can substitute the value of p substitute the value of e and we know the angle between these two vectors is 0 degree so here we can write p multiplied by lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r multiplied by cos 0 okay cos 0 equal to 1 so this value potential energy will be equal to lambda divided by lambda p divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r this is the potential energy with negative sign and here one thing to be noted potential energy of the system is negative that means the system has the negative potential energy that means the dipole will attract over the wire there will be force of attraction of the dipole toward the wire. Okay. Now, let us calculate the magnitude of the force. As we discuss in the theory part, the force acting on the dipole should be partial derivative of u with respect to r okay, with negative sign. So, here we can write force between the wire and dipole equal to minus del u by del r and direction you know we can consider this rightward direction as x direction. So, the force will be associated with the i cap unit vector. Okay. Now, we can make the partial derivative. That means, we need to differentiate this function with respect to small r. You can observe here lambda p divided by 2 pi epsilon r are the constant term. That means, the derivative of r to the power minus 1 r to the power minus 1 have the derivative value equal to minus 1 upon r square. So, here we can write this term the derivative lambda p divided by 2 pi epsilon naught and this is minus 1 divided by r square i cap. Okay? Now, we can rearrange this equation like this. So, this value will be p lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r, r square i cap and as we discussed the potential energy is negative so force is attractive and we can observe here through this vector equation the force acting on the dipole is in the negative x direction or leftward direction so we can say the force on the dipole will be attractive toward the leftward direction in this question it is given two dipole moments parallel to each other these are the two dipoles and dipole moments are parallel to each other and dipoles are separated at a distance a small x. Okay? And here we need to find the force of interaction between the dipoles. Okay? So, let us do one thing. Let us make the diagram to the next space. This one. Here, let us consider this dipole P1 and P2 as a system or group of the dipoles uh, as a system and we have one pair. One pair means we can find the potential energy of the system either calculating u12 or u21. What is the difference between u12 and u21? Let us understand. 
if we write u21 that means the potential energy of the dipole number 2 associated with the field of the dipole number 1 right this is u21 if we write u12 that means the potential energy of dipole number 1 associated with the field of the dipole number 2 both will have the equal value so either we can calculate u21 or u12 so let us calculate the potential energy of the system let us calculate u21 we can write u21 equal to minus p2 dot product e21 e21 is the electric field generated by the dipole number 1 at the center of the dipole number 2 okay so we can observe here this dipole center the center of the dipole number 2 is lying at the equatorial position of the dipole number 1 and we know the direction of the electric field because of dipole number 1 will be anti parallel to dipole moment that is p1 so electric field at the center of this dipole because of this dipole will be in the downward direction like this and it will have the magnitude equal to 1 upon 4 perhaps or not p1 divided by x cube x is the separation between the dipoles this vector diagram we can observe these vectors are anti parallel that means the angle between the vectors are 180 degree so here we can write this equation as minus p2 multiplied by 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught p1 divided by x cube and cos 180 degree okay cos 180 degree equal to minus 1 so minus 1 and minus will be positive so this value will become u let us write instead of u21 u because u12 and u21 both will have the same value so here we write potential energy as 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught p1 p2 divided by x cube okay so here we got the potential energy of the system we can calculate the potential energy this value by simple cal simply calculating u12 also so we got the potential energy here one thing is to be noted potential energy of the system is positive and potential energy of the system if it is positive that means dipole will repel each other so there will be force of repulsion between the dipoles now come to the calculation of the force value you know the dipoles are parallel to each other okay and uh, separation is x between the centers of the dipole that means the force between the dipoles and also you can observe this potential energy function is related with the x coordinate the separation between the dipoles that means the force between the dipoles can be calculated by taking partial derivative of u with respect to x so we can write f equal to minus del u by del x i cap so this is the force between the dipole here we can observe this 1 upon 4 perhaps not p1 p2 both are the constant term this and this so there is the derivative of 1 upon x cube so let us write this term 1 upon 4 perhaps not p1 p2 outside the derivative like this so we need to find the derivative value of x to the power minus 3 x to the power minus 3 derivative should be equal to minus 3 multiplication x to the power minus 3 minus 1. Now we can solve here minus minus will be positive. So this value will be equal to 3 p1 p2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught x to the power 4 i cap. We can observe here the force is uh, in the positive x direction that means dipoles are repelling each other. In this illustration, you can observe again we have the two dipoles P1 and P2 are placed along same axis at a separation x apart like this. Okay, separation between the center of the dipoles is x. And here also we need to find the force of interaction between the dipoles. Let us make this diagram to the next space like this. Okay, and here again we can observe in the system of the two dipoles we have one pair either we can write u12 or u21 as we discuss u12 and u21 will have the same value so let us calculate the value of potential energy u21 that is the potential energy associated with the second dipole 
due to the electric field of the first dipole. So, let us write the potential energy of the system of dipole that is u21 equal to minus p2 dot e21. Okay. As we discussed, p2 is the dipole moment of the second uh, dipole and e21 is the electric field generated by the first dipole at the center of the second dipole. And here we can observe the center of the second dipole is lying at the axial position of the first dipole. That means, the electric field generated by the first dipole at the center of the second dipole will be parallel to the p1 vector like this and it will have the value 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught 2 p1 divided by x cube. Here from the diagram we can observe this p2 vector and e21 vector both are parallel to each other that means angle between these two vectors is 0 degree. So, here we can write this equal to minus p2 multiplied by e21 which have the magnitude 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught 2 p1 by x cube multiplied by cos 0. Okay, cos 0 equal to 1. So, this value will be equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught 2 p1 p2 divided by x cube. Here we can observe the potential energy of the system of the dipole is negative. Negative potential energy represent the force of attraction. That means, the potential of the system is negative. That means, the dipole will attract each other. Okay. So, we got the potential energy of the system which is the function of x. That means, for calculating the force, we need to do the partial derivative or simple derivative of u with respect to x with the negative sign. So, let us write the force between the dipole f vector equal to minus del u by del x i cap. Okay. Now, we can observe this negative sign including 4 pi epsilon naught 2 p 1 p 2 are the constant term. That means, we need to do the derivative of x to the power minus 3. So, let us write this expression. Now, we can make this term 2 p 1 p 2 4 pi epsilon naught and we can observe minus and minus will be positive multiplication. So, we can write like this. The derivative of this function is minus 3 multiplication x to the power minus 3 minus 1 and i cap. So, we can write this as 2 p 1 p 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon multiplication as we discussed. So, finally, we can write like this. We can observe here the force is along the minus x direction that is in the left y direction. That means, this dipole will attract toward the second dipole. There is force of attraction between the dipoles.